We're going to do a little demonstration of uh, the halogen uh, reactivity series. We have some chlorine, some bromine, and some iodine dissolved in water. And then we have sodium chloride, sodium bromide, and sodium iodide. And so we're going to take each halogen and react it with the complementary halides. So why don't we go ahead and start with iodine. So we're going to put some iodine solution in here. It's challenging to get this to... Uh, Dissolve in water, so we've had to warm it up a little bit. So, to the iodine, we want to add chloride and bromide and see if it reacts. But first, we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of hexane, heptane, sorry. And that's going to help us kind of see who wins these battles. So, currently, the iodine is in here. And the iodine dissolves in the in the heptane to form kind of a purplish layer up there. And so we can kind of see the brown color of the aqueous layer and the purple color of that. So we are looking for if that will disappear. So we're going to have to put chloride here, bromide here. Swirl it around. Swirl it around. And we can see that that purple color is still persisting, which means that the iodine did not react with anything. So now we're going to try a different one. We're going to go ahead and do some bromine. We're going to put bromine into here. Bromine is an orange color. So interestingly, the bromine is not dissolving in the heptane layer. Let me do this. Oh, it looks like we're getting a little bit of orange color. Nope, that's clear. So if you look through to the very top, you'll just completely see through it. You get a little bit of reflection of the orange into there. So for bromine, we're going to add chloride here. And we're going to add iodide here. Okay. Now, for the chloride, it didn't look like anything really happened, but clearly here when we added the iodide to the bromine, we see something happen. And additionally, we already see this purple color coming off of it. And that's very similar to the purple color we see over here, which means that we've reacted to form iodine from the iodide. Okay, now for our last one here, we're going to put chlorine in water. We're going to add some hexane, heptane. And to the chlorine, we're going to add bromide to this one. And again, we can see the color change, and we see an orange develop, and that's very similar to the bromine. And then we add the iodine. We again see a change, and this time we see that dark color, and we're starting to see a little bit of purple shine through there. So the chlorine gas reacts with bromide or iodide, bromine reacts with iodide, and then nothing else reacted. So here we can see the finished product. We end up with iodine here, iodine here, bromine here, iodine, bromine, and iodine, which means that the chlorine is the most reactive of the three, since we never end up with chlorine. Anytime we started with chlorine, it reacted to form chloride. That also means that the iodine is the least reactive because the only thing, the iodine doesn't react with anything. Now bromine is kind of the intermediate. So when we added bromide to chlorine, the bromide reacted to form bromine, but when we added bromine to iodide, nothing happened. And so we can generate an activity series from this. And we can also get into why is iodine less reactive than chlorine, or alternatively, why is iodide more reactive than chloride or bromide.